Oh, oh. More of that in a minute. Can I have a day? It's good looking Pete again. Smoking. I had a few questions in uh, last, last week and the week before about different things that we do. Uh, one of them was, uh, before I start anyway, uh, just a quick shout out to uh, Sailing Emerald Steel. Thanks for the uh, mentioning us in your video. You are a watchable channel, one of the better watchable channels. Uh, shout out to Sailing Miss Lone Star. She's starting to get her act together now. I'm sure she'll do very bad, even without all the haters, give you thumbs down all the time. Uh, Sailing Antares this week has uh, said he's uh, selling his boat. Uh, the problem was that Sailing Antares, he think he took on a little bit too much. Uh, and uh, he didn't have the money to continue paying for it. Uh, if you're going to buy a boat, try and buy one that's actually in the water. If you not going to buy one that's in the water, like Don has done, uh, and Alan did as well. Uh, get it back in the water as quick as you can. Don't forget, most of the time, all you've got to do is uh, give them a quick paint and get them back in the water. Check any uh, through hole fit fittings and uh, just make sure it's not leaking. Get it in the water so you can do 99% of the work in the water. Uh, Kevin this week, one of our uh, one of our friends at Conway, he had a bit of trouble with his a bit loud there as well. Had a bit of trouble with his uh, centaur. He got caught in the sandbank, and apparently he's had some damage to his rudder. Uh, when he got back, when he started float again, uh, it would only go one way, not the other. So we're going to just go down and see if we can give a hand, quick hand with that one. Shouldn't be a big job. The, the problem is with uh, Kevin's, it's in uh, Marina, again more of that in the next few minutes. We don't, we don't like Marinas, and I'll tell you why anyway. You just... I've got a few questions about uh, what we use for filming. I was watching a video this week, somebody was saying they need thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of pounds uh, paying into the Patreon account or the PayPal account to uh, keep them going with the camera equipment. Uh, the one you we're filming on now costs £60 uh, and it's per as you can see it's a perfectly good camera. I think it could do with the autofocus turning off but we'll see when I finish this one. Of the cameras we've got well, still got now. Uh, this bag survived falling off the top of a car on a motorway at 70 miles an hour. Open up, all the contents out on a motorway. Uh, I run down the motorway like an idiot and saved it all. Except for one camera I didn't save, but uh, we've got a lot invested in this. So we need, uh, we need to set a Patreon up. We need about 25. No, we don't. <laughs> so here we go. This is one of our first cameras. Uh, Vivitar HD, is a HD camera, £5 from CEX in England, you'll find them, you'll find them in America, uh, probably Walmart, places like that, or Craigslist. Uh, good camera, because of about an hour, hour and a half, good picture, but really this camera it doesn't like moving about too much. Uh, if you fix it to get these stands, these are a pound, one dollar. In America. Uh, if you're not using it on the stand, I'll figure out how to open it. And I've just got my nails, so I've not even got any nails. Right, nice little camera, as you can see. Uh, cost is a fiver, very good picture. If you're putting it somewhere stable or bolting it to the back of the bolt, tying it to the back of the bolt, taping it to the back of the bolt, it'll take a very good film, as good as the camera you're actually on. That's the first one. And they do survive, if they survived falling off on a motorway, they'll survive on that. 
Uh, another camera, this is the one Dom picked up. I think he paid about £3 for this one. Again, HD. It's a Samsung. Don't know what the model is. It'll be in here somewhere. I normally do put model numbers in. Uh, U10BP. Let's have a look around for one. Uh, full HD, 10 megapixels. Very good picture. Again, it could do with uh, being fixed or something. Most cameras have this screw thread on the side, standard thread, so you can put it on to a stand. Another good camera. Uh, if you're going to do anything with most of these cameras, even the camera I'm actually filming on now, uh, buy yourself one of these from eBay. For about uh, £1.99, two and a half dollars. Uh, it takes two of these standard rechargeable batteries in it. You can buy it with the batteries in for about £4 on eBay. Uh, comes with a lead and you can charge up any of your cameras on the go or run some of the cameras, you can actually run it straight from this battery. Two and a half hours we get out of this, no messing. So buy yourself one of them or buy a four bank version because I prefer these. I've got about six of these. Buy yourself a selfie stick, again, pound, that's all these are. Uh, most of the time, like I say, all these cameras have a thread on the side, the standard thread. Your selfie stick in, and you're away. Do any of you? And that happened last time. Bit of tape on your selfie stick, stop that. As you can see, you can turn it round, film yourself, whatever you want to film. So we're up to less than a tenner already with that one. Uh, there are other ways of charging your cameras up, phones up. Here's another one. You can get these on eBay. It's cost about six pounds. Uh, it's a rechargeable battery bank, as you can see. You can see the green light if it's come on. Again, you come to the cable like this. You put the cable in the side and plug that into your phone. Oh, that's the other way around. Get it right, Pete. USB on the side of it. USB in, plug it into your phone and you're away. Charge your phone up. The handy thing with this one is, and this is still 650 milliamps, but this one, that's enough to charge your phone up for about 10 minutes. So obviously, pull it 25, 30 times you've got away. Another good little one to buy. The same about cameras. This is the first camera we ever used. Of all the, I think we've got 290 videos on now. Uh, 270 of them were filmed with this camera. We have got the new camera we're filming on now. The 270 we're filming on this. This is an action camera, it costs about, I think it was 60, 70 pounds, something like that. Uh, this has survived being dropped off the back of the top of a car on the motorway. Uh, perfectly all right, I think we lost the back on it. But uh, I'll start this filming now and film the camera we're actually filming. Uh, this uh, 60, fra uh, 60 frames a second this will do. Uh, full HD, slow motion, so many things this will do. Uh, as you see, it's only a little screen on the side of it, but it's Wi-Fi. So you get the app on your, tele on your mobile phone and you can view what the camera's viewing, which is very handy if you want to place the camera somewhere. Uh, but a very good uh, camera. I'll just turn it on now. Yeah, turn it on the side. Give it a second. Yeah, it's recording, so I'm recording the camera that I'm filming with now. And I'll put that as a, I'll put it up here up here on the picture for you to see. Uh, the one we're filming on now is a Fujifilm, say £60 we pay for it. Nice camera, you don't have to pay silly money. Pay a £1,000 if you want, £2,000 if you want. When you drop them or they get wet you'll be crying. But if we drop this or it gets wet we just buy another one. Press it to stop it.
So there's all the cameras we use. Uh, 120, 140 pound altogether. Well, that was three years ago. So, uh, well, get your head together, Pete. About 35 pound. 35, 40 pound. Yeah, 40 pound. Say per year it's cost us. She's nothing. Uh, pennies. Right, that's just the cameras to go through. Well, let's try saving you some money because that's what we're trying to do best at uh, Second Chance Island. We don't like spending money. If we can spend a pound, that's the best thing. Uh, right. Marinas stay away from marinas. Right, I'm going to base all the things I'm doing now on a centaur 26 foot. It's up to you if you've only got a 23 foot, or you've got a 28 foot, 32 foot, you've got a 52 foot. Good. <laughs> You're going to spend a lot of money. But we'll, 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 we'll uh, base all our talk now on a centaur. Marinas, if you've got a centaur, stay away from them. Uh, three and a half, four and a half thousand pounds on 90% of the marinas in the UK. If you find any cheaper, put them in the comments below. Stay out. For one thing, for people who when they first start to uh, start with a yacht on a boat, and really matter what boat you've got, uh, very hard places to get in and out of the first time. Uh, you, you'd think they've got all the amenities there, but uh, Kevin's going to find out now that in his three and a half, four thousand pound marina that he's in, he can't even fix a rudder on his boat uh, without lifting it out for 160 pound one way, 160 pound back. So it's a lot of money. That's your first one, Marinas. So, like I say, uh, three and a half to four and a half thousand pounds per year to keep your centre size 26 foot ball in one of them. Your next one, as you know, is what we use. And uh, even for first timers, you'll find you get used to it very quick. Is a mooring boy. Swinging mooring. Whether it's owned by a marina, not many marinas actually have them. Well, yeah, some do, some don't. I'll tell you the cheapest way to get a swinging mooring. We find out that this is normally the cheapest. At Conway itself, Centre, uh, £850 per year. If you're a local resident, it's down to about 650 So it's quite a cheap way to do it. Uh, Next one, use your anchor. Uh, quite a few places in England where you can actually just anchor at a place, uh, especially if you've got a bilge keel, you can leave it there if you're happy with it there. Most people can uh, get by with just doing it like that. It's totally up to you. Next one. Hard standing. There are a lot of, uh, not marinas, but uh, boatyards around England where you can get a hard standing place. Uh, but again, it's going to cost you money. Uh, dickies you can only go off the ones we know, but they're, they're almost all the same, near enough. Dickies, uh, about £22. 20 yeah, 20 to £22 per week for uh, to leave your boat on hard stand. You can do all your work there, it's electric, water, everything you could want there. So that's one of the cheapest ways. So, well, that's if you've got £22 per week. It normally doesn't sound a lot, but when it's uh, 10 weeks, 20 weeks, 52 weeks, it's a lot of money for most people. But if you need to do the work, that's one of the ways you can have to do it. It's on a hard standing. Uh, but like I say, and most of the work that you're going to even do on a hard standing, you can do out at sea if it's in the bay. The tip of us for getting a cheap morning. Go on the internet, especially if you're in England, but I'll research the, the Americans for you because you've got the wet slips there. But uh, go on the internet and type in Council Moorings in the UK. Now you will be shocked there. Uh, there are some very cheap council moorings in the UK. Now the example for that is uh, 
well, like I say, we don't like to spend a lot of money. But Don went to Anglesey Council. Uh, now they have their own wardings. I think there's about 10 or 11 places around Anglesey. That's just Anglesey, it's not a very big island, 25 miles across. Uh, there's 10 or 11 mooring places there that they own. They've probably got 40 boats on each one. And they're very cheap, uh, Anglesey. Well, what you have to do, basically what you have to do is you buy uh, the mooring plot so you're buying a chain and uh, whatever they've used on that particular one sometimes it can be a block of concrete sometimes it can be uh, a 52 gallon oil container sunk in the mud with concrete uh, it's not a very vicious tide anyway and most things will hold it even a car engine is hold it if you could bury it in the mud so you buy the plot and that's yours, you own that plot and then you rent the plot. I know it sounds a bit stupid, but then you rent the plot off the council. Now, the rental is £150 per year. Now, as I said before, at the likes of the marinas, this is weekly, not monthly. So, most of the marinas you're going to be paying for a centre £80 per week. Uh, even in Conway, on a swinging morning, it's going to cost you around £20 per week. Don's, you can find it. Don's now costs him £2.50 per week. Now you're not going to find yourself short of money paying that kind of money. Uh, the downside with Don's is uh, it's on swinging mooring and the only time you can get out to it is with a dinghy or at low tide if you fancy to get through a little bit of mud. Better well as you prefer to be alright. Uh, or use a dinger, and we found out using a dinger now we're getting on very used to that after a few slip ups. <laughs> uh, so that's one of, the, one of the cheapest ways you can get to do it. Uh, Don, Don did go out last week with Roy, I wasn't there, Alan, none of the Allens were there either. Uh, and again, he had a few problems. First time out with his uh, Don's boat, Gem, his centre. Uh, for sale, shredded, Not like Robinson Crusoe's pants. Don't forget it had been stood <laughs> I said I wouldn't laugh. Uh, it had been stood there for four or five years and uh, the wind got it and just ripped it to bits. Uh, it's water pump went. Another thing we couldn't have uh, seen because uh, the engine had been there for four years with water inside it. The impeller had rotted away obviously in uh, the water pump. And uh, I think that was about it that went. Yeah. Uh, the water pump, we've, we've went online. Watch out for the channelers, swindlers. Uh, they wanted £180 for a water pump. We've got that down now by searching around on eBay to £60. It could quite get a bit cheaper than that. So there's always ways of getting everything you want cheaper. But like I said before, if you're going to buy a boat, there's two ways. You're going to be buying a boat to go sailing, or you're going to be buying a boat to do lots of work on. Obviously, if you're spending peanuts on it, you're probably going to have to do a lot of work. Unless you're lucky, and sometimes you will be very lucky, and get one that doesn't need a lot of work. Uh, but uh, if you are looking at long time, long term, it's going to cost you a lot of money. Uh, you can do most of the work on it cheaply, uh, you can buy cheap paint, you don't have to buy the £60 a lease or stuff. Uh, wood, you, not, you don't always need to need uh, need to use oak, teak, mahogany, things like that. You can get away with cheaper stuff. And that's just about it. Uh, see you soon.